Salut Arem, this is Elena from Elena the Expat and today I'm in Chisinau, the capital of Moldova. Rather than showing you the beauties of the city, I'm going to show you the city through the eyes of expats. We will find out where they live, how much money do they need per month and what are the things that they enjoy about Moldova and which things not so much. So our guest for today is a wonderful American couple, Bob and Brienne. They have both been here for the last three months and they are teaching at the local university. Let's go meet them. So Bob, tell me about how you came to Moldova. Uh, well, my wife and I, we came here to be visiting professors. Uh, through a program in the United States called the Fulbright Exchange Program. We did have to get uh, health certificates, we had to get uh, visas, which we got uh, after we got here. And it might not be a visa, maybe it's just a residency permit. Oh, okay. And, um, you know, uh, fortunately our program kind of uh, funded our stay here, so that mm -hmm. took care of the financial part of it. What would you say would be an advice for somebody moving to Moldova? How much money do oh, they have to have sure, on hand? Sure, sure, sure. Okay, okay. Well, you know, it's interesting. We, um, I think we probably spent over a thousand dollars on appliances and things that, you know, just like things we needed for our, our apartment was furnished, but we still needed, um, uh, things like a blender and things like an electric blanket for the winter and some space heaters. And, um, my wife likes to exercise using a, a trampoline, a mini indoor trampoline, which we bought. So, yeah, I think at least a thousand or more, depending on what you need. These ambulances are amazing. I walk up and down this street to my university all day long. <laughs> I think you could have done the program in other countries. Yeah, Why sure, Moldova? sure, sure. Well, you know, I think I think a lot of travelers, uh, my wife and I included, we've been to a lot of places, but um, people are often looking for something you might call like a hidden gem. Right. Something that hasn't been discovered. Something that that is unique and is still very authentic. And, and we had come here in the summer uh, before we arrived and uh, got a really good feel for it and thought, you know, let's go back there and let's spend a year there. I think the first night that we were here, we ended up in the park at Piana Vishina and it was a beautiful summer night and then sort of like uh, an outdoor disco sort of erupted. And, and we just sort of, thought, sort of thought, wow, this is exactly what people in America think of when they think of Europe. It's just like this great, relaxed um, party life. Is it always so easy <laughs> and relaxed or you had also some difficulties? Um, we, we really haven't had any, any difficulties to speak of. You know, the winter is coming. Uh, winter will be very difficult for everyone in Europe, yeah. especially people in Ukraine. But um, no, it's been, it's been a very soft, smooth landing, I would say here. So the other question that I have is obviously the apartment. That yeah, seems to yeah. be the most difficult part of any move. How was your apartment finding experience? Yeah. Uh, it was actually, looking back on it, it was pretty easy. Uh, we just uh, found a website with listings of several apartments. We reached out and um, got in contact with a really nice realtor who uh, you know, showed us this, the, the one we're in now it was the first one we saw. Mm -hmm. and. And, and I just decided on the spot that that's the place where we would live. Mm. But when you came here for the first time, were you like, did you stay straight away in the apartment or like, how did you? No, no, we, we got a really amazing Airbnb uh -huh. on uh, Stefan Chalmare and we had, uh, we had it for a few weeks and, and could have extended if, if we needed to, but we kind of set ourselves a deadline. Uh, we had arrived on about August 15th. It's like, okay, let's try to sign a lease and be in a place by September 1st. And that's exactly what happened. We had considered trying to get the apartment before we arrived, but I would not recommend that. I think it was really a good idea to have the Airbnb, have a couple weeks, look, we wanted to see some places instead of uh, signing a lease sight unseen. So what are the conditions of your lease right now? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a 10 month lease. Um, uh, I pay $1,200 a month, uh, 1,200 euros a month in rent, uh, plus utilities. And um, uh, we'll have the apartment for 10 months. And uh, you know, we, we could stay month to month after that if we wanted, but um, uh, our, our grant program is over at the end of June. Mm -hmm. So we'll be leaving after that. We'll go back to the United States and, and interestingly, we'll move to Las Vegas. My wife will take a assistant professor job at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. So it's, it's quite a, gonna be quite a um, culture shock 
to go from uh, Chisinau, Moldova to Las Vegas. Tell me like three things that are really good about the city that you really enjoy here. Okay, three things. One, uh, there are so many uh, cute cafes and nice restaurants. And, uh, you know, when, when we, even when we walk through the center, which we walk through every day, it seems like we just, there's a new uh, little coffee spot around the corner from us. There's a new grocery store like two blocks from us. It's like we can hardly keep up with the energy that we find in the city center. So, okay, so that's one. Why? Uh, okay, it's kind of uh, uh, got a small town vibe to it. Like, like I see my students when I walk around. I, I see people I know and I've met when I'm uh, on the bus. Like, like uh, even though we've only been here a few months, we're already sort of developing a community of friends. And it was very easy for us to, to start making friends here. Okay, so that's two. We just, we just, we love being in a place that is, it feels like Europe and is Europe to us. Like that, that's been a goal of mine since I studied abroad here in the 1980s, uh, not, not here in Moldova, but here in Europe, was to live in Europe someday. And I just feel like, okay, I've, I've, I'm doing it. That's where I am and that's what I'm doing. Which neighborhood would you recommend, let's say, for life if they want to stay long term? And which neighborhood if they're just here for one, two weeks as tourists? Right. Well, OK, so in the short term, just stay in the center. It's just like we can you can walk everywhere within 10 or 15 minutes, which is really enjoyable. It's just such a great, a great way to live and a great way to see things. And, and everywhere you, you walk, there's embassies, there's art museums, there's there's always something to see. Um, uh, we do have friends, other Americans we've made uh, friends with who live in other neighborhoods and um, they, they all, and we visit them in those neighborhoods and all those neighborhoods seem great. We, we definitely looked at some apartments that were not in the actual center. And, and they, like, what, what, what would be the difference per month? You pay 1,200. You, we, you know, we looked at a really, really nice apartment that was like 600 euros a month. Oh, so twice cheaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was half as much and it was, it was not far. Like I still would have been making that walk. My wife has a bus pass. She could have easily done the bus, but I don't even want to be on the bus. I like the bus. The bus is convenient. The bus is cool and warm in the winter, but I'd rather just be on foot. Mm -hmm. So I, I really, I'm not even biking here, which is the, how I mainly get around in my own city. By the way, there's a really cool uh, video of Bob biking in Belarus. I'm going to link it in the comments down below. You have to watch it. It's amazing. That's one of the first videos that I saw with Bob and how I decided to invite him uh, to have this little chat on my channel. So we are in this uh, beautiful park. Is this something that you also have in the U.S., like just sitting, relaxing in the park? It's certainly not in my town very much. You know, we have parks in our inner, inner, inner city core, but um, park life, hanging out in parks is fairly rare. So, so when, we, when we saw this here uh, last summer, we were immediately attracted to it and just thought, you know, this, this is a place we should think about staying in. You have so much interaction with the people at the university, both students and other professors. What are Moldovans like? It's a country of people in motion. They, they're, they're either about to go somewhere or they just got back from somewhere or their, their parents are somewhere or going somewhere. It's just everybody I talk to seems to be moving around to other countries and um, you know, exploring opportunities, seeking opportunities, taking advantage of opportunities. I just woke up this morning to see on Instagram, one of my students uh, just arrived in Georgia for a very short term Erasmus Plus program. And, and others of my students, like they're gone for a week or two. And then you see on Instagram, they're in another country doing some mobility program. So really, I, I just think the word that sums up the whole student experience here is mobility. Tell me a bit about the language, because I know yeah. that you don't really speak Romanian. How would, do you make do? It's a surprising number of people who talk to us, answer us in English. And, and, and I, I don't just mean like young people in college and just storekeepers, but, you know, uh, just even earlier today, I was approached by a man who, 
who who um, needed wanted some money, and, and I was just like, I'm sorry, I don't speak English. And so he switched from Romanian to English and was asking me for money in English. And I just thought that's so great. And and I'm not, a, I'm never surprised by uh, just everyone who can speak a little bit of English to me. The complex opened mm -hmm. on August 31st, 2004. Mm -hmm. So every year on August 31st, they have a big party. So the day we moved in, we got to meet so many of our neighbors, one of whom teaches at the Pedagogical University with me and, and just others, one from Belarus. Yeah. So we've got to make some friends with, with some of our neighbors. Let's go see the Okay, apartment. okay, yeah, sure. There's all these balconies, you know, balconies are not really a thing in the United States, but every apartment I've been in uh, in Europe always has balconies. And we have two balconies, which we sort of don't know what to do with. Like we don't know how to like use those as part of our life. Brian, I heard so many beautiful words about you from Bob. Just tell us a little bit about what you do here in Moldova. Uh, sure, yeah, so I'm here as a Fulbright Scholar. Um, we are, I'm at university, uh, the State University of Moldova, and um, am conducting a research project about related to gender-based violence and social media, and um, teaching uh, re it, courses related to social work. Uh, well, this is the sort of mm -hmm. Corridor for foyer area with like tons it's of very spacious. Yeah, yeah. We were um, it was surprising to us how much um, like you can see here. There's so much um, like closet space. Sorry, that's yeah. a, a dirty closet. But um, in this room over here, um, we have sort of a spare room where we do some work here. There's a, a an office. Um, what I. About this? <laughs> like, I have to ask. So what, yeah. What are you doing on it? This is something we bought, yeah. It was one of the first things um, I wanted to buy because it brings me so much joy and um, it's funny. You, we, you know, when you just sort of can't help but smile when you're yeah. <laughs> jumping on it. You want to have a try? Okay, I'll do it. And not fluff. Oh, that's actually stupid. Yeah. That's what do you think? Hard. No, I, I understand what you said about it gives you energy. It does give you energy. Yeah, so everything was here. The chairs, the... Um, even where we fold our laundry, the, stretcher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the desk, uh, our bed, um, <laughs> the table, the, the tables and chairs in the kitchen. I don't know if you would like to see our sort of dining room, yeah, living room. Let's, let's have a look. Um, this was all really bedroom, this living room, that room we just showed you, and the kitchen. Uh -huh. And then we have uh, two bathrooms. Um, a shower, toilet, everything is uh -huh. in here. And then same with the other one. It's uh -huh. just a little bit bigger. That's really um, nice. And uh, what about this? Is this the kitchen? This is the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Come on in. Um, Ooh, this is nice. Also very spacious. So much cupboard space. Um, there's also a little... Uh, we have a little balcony type sort of area. It's a little cold, but... Um, very nice view of Chisinau. It is true, it is amazing. What's with the chestnuts though? <laughs> These things? Yes. I'm from Ohio. There's a tradition at Ohio State University to make necklaces mm -hmm. out of these. Um, and so we collected a bunch and are intending to do an activity with some students. Teach them about, you know, football culture and uh, mm -hmm. university life at, in Ohio. So every month uh, we, have to pay, we have to pay for all of the utilities, water, electricity, gas, internet, and we have an association fee that we have to pay. Um, and so uh, the water is, let's say, $10 a month. Um, the uh, internet is not quite $10 a month. The electricity would be about uh, $30 or $40 a month. The gas could, could, you know, it's $50 a month now. It could be $100 or $150 a month. We don't know what it's going to be in the winter. Um, and then our association fee is $25 a month. Um, and so I guess we're kind of budgeting about $150 a month. 
but keeping in the back of our minds that in December, January, and February, it could be $200 or $250 a month. Brian, tell us about life here in Moldova from your perspective. Obviously, you're so far away from friends, family. Is that a problem here? How is it to make friends? For me, it's in general uh, can be a challenge to make friends at this age, um, no matter where I am, I think, because I tend to be more of an introvert. When I can interact with people in English, then they're very much, uh, I think, very open to interacting. There's also some other uh, Fulbrighters here uh, in the country in different, different areas, and um, we've been staying in touch with each other and making, you know, looking after each other, sort of. I know that you're an introvert, but surely you do something in your free time. What do you like to do here? Explore the different neighborhoods and see the architecture. Um, so I tend to go most often to Coffee Maker. Mm. Uh, it's my favorite because they, they play sort of blues music and have lots of green plants and uh, have delicious coffee. Toro Burger? Because mm. <laughs> I, I like... Uh, burgers without the bun uh, and there's a Georgian restaurant that we really love that I love their uh, food um Sap Saparavi? Saparavi. Yeah. Saparavi yeah okay yeah. do you find here all the dishes that you want to find do you have any food restrictions and you've been struggling with are you eating you know meat like has been food generally here in Moldova for you a couple things so one I do have some food restrictions I can't have dairy or gluten so that has been a challenge because um, I didn't know when I first arrived that most often it doesn't say like that there will be cheese included. So I was ordering things and like French fries had cheese on top or like a salad had cheese. Dairy substitute, like vegan dairy substitute items in this country compared to what you can find in the U.S. And so that um, uh, my options I think are, are more limited, but the fruits and vegetables here are so delicious, so to be honest. So tell us about that. Like, yeah. how much a meal at a canteen style, you know, would mm -hmm. cost for two? And what about a dinner for a more fancy dinner for two in a restaurant? At the lunch counter, for two of us to have a big, each have a big plate of food is usually maybe five dollars, five US dollars uh, total. If it's a really fancy, like sisters, probably like, 30 to 40 dollars I think and then uh, something less fancy maybe closer to 20 dollars total but like still like a sit-down restaurant with someone waiting on you and uh, a cup, glass of wine and uh, a dessert. Is there anything at all that you miss about home being here in Moldova? I very much miss international cuisines like in, in Ohio for example we have very authentic and delicious like Chinese food, uh, Indian food, uh, Mexican food, Vietnamese, Thai, like so many different options. And so, and we have found that there's not that very much of that here in Moldova. At the mall, we, there was a, a Mexican restaurant, for example, but it was um, not very authentic Mexican food. Uh, but in terms like spicy Chinese food and Thai food, oh, I really miss that. 